Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of Engineering Q&A. I'm Ari Swartz, the Assistant Director of the Office of Future Engineers. And in this video, we're interviewing a couple representatives from our School of Electrical and Computer Engineering. I'm joined here by Zach and Ishmeen. I'll have them introduce themselves. Zach, uh, we can start with you. Hello there, my name is Zach Vandermissen and I am a PhD student in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. I was also an undergraduate student here at Purdue and I studied electrical engineering. Awesome, Ishmeet. Hi, uh, I'm Ishmeet Kaur. Uh, I am a senior in computer engineering at Purdue and I'm from New Delhi, India and I'm graduating in December, 2020. Awesome, welcome to you both. Thanks for taking some time to be here with me to answer these questions. Um, Zach, I want to start with you. One of the common questions that our office gets, and I'm sure um, many of you guys do as well, is what's the difference between electrical engineering and computer engineering? So you were an electrical in your undergrad. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about how it differs and why you chose that route? Sure, I can. So electrical and computer engineering, a lot of times we like to talk about it with prospective students as a spectrum. On one end, you have the most uh, basic fundamental uh, physical hands-on type aspects that relate to physics and how actual wires and circuits work. And at the other end of the spectrum, you have the most uh, sort of abstracted on the computer level concepts like things related to software and coding and things like of that nature. And so electrical and computer engineering sort of starts with electrical down at the hardware physical side and gets all the way to computer up at the software side. And there's definitely some overlap in the middle. There are things uh, like embedded systems uh, where both programming as well as uh, design of circuits and things kind of get mashed together there and both electrical and computer engineers work together at that level. So I chose electrical engineering because I really liked some of the hands-on design aspects. I was especially interested in uh, audio systems when I started my undergraduate career here and so I wanted to look at things like speakers and sound systems and things like that. Awesome. Ishmeet, how about you? Um, why did you choose computer engineering um, as opposed to electrical engineering? And what would you describe the difference between the two programs in your eyes being? So I came into computer engineering thinking like uh, it's a very, in a layman language, I feel like computer is just like, um, it's like a prototype of the human world and like uh, both electrical and computer are kind of supporting that and uh, what I see the difference is like as Zach mentioned like computer science like computer science from the school of like college of the science it's more about software and uh, more about the software side of computer while electrical is more hard hardware side like everything like how machines are made like from scratch like chips and like what kind of physics is used behind it. And I think computer engineering can be like somewhere in between, we can say, because I have taken classes from both purely software to purely architecture and like even things like semiconductor and all those kind of things. So like as a computer engineering, especially at Purdue, like how would I define is like we can, we lie somewhere in between of that spectrum. And according to our, uh, like ex like what experience do we need we can take classes from like either like more software side of things or more hardware side of things so it gives that flexibility that we can go any like either the other side of the spectrum about s computer science or we can go to hardware like side of spectrum which is um electrical engineering um so let's talk about some of the different career outcomes for um these two fields uh zach as an electrical engineering student um, you obviously went straight into grad school. Is that pretty common? What kind of career fields do students go into after they finish their undergraduate degree in electrical engineering? Um, I think that at least as compared to electrical versus computer, going to grad school is similar. I don't think one is more likely to go to grad school than the other. But um, there are a huge breadth of careers that you could have in electrical engineer. So almost any company you can think of, and I mean genuinely nearly any company you can think of, would hire an electrical engineer in some capacity. Uh, if a company makes something, then they probably need a controls engineer to help run any of the automation that they have in their factory. And that person might work together with industrial engineers in that application. Uh, if they make anything electronic, that just needs engineers, both electrical and computer, from front to back of the process, uh, as well as um, even heavy industrial companies, uh, I had an internship experience where I was working with a steel mill. And uh, in that case, I was maybe working in something that was closer to a 
uh, computer engineering role, but there is a lot of flexibility with an electrical engineering degree to, if you have the right background, say for example programming experience, branch out into a wide diversity of jobs. Uh, really there's no end to the different fields in which you could get a career with electrical engineering. So you obviously, um, did you go straight to graduate school after you finished your undergrad? Yeah, I did go straight to graduate school. So why did you so, choose to um, pursue a graduate degree? So I had a couple of uh, internship experiences that gave me some informed opinions about what uh, a bachelor's job might be like in industry as an electrical engineer. And I also had the opportunity to do some uh, uh, academic research as an undergraduate directly with a professor here at Purdue. And uh, I was interested in that. And I also got through that the chance to learn a little bit more about uh, careers in the specific field that I was working in, uh, which is RF electronics. And there are a lot more diverse opportunities in that field uh, if you have a more advanced degree like a master's or a PhD. And I actually think that that is very true all across both electrical and computer engineering. You'll find areas where you have a lot more doors open to you if you have an advanced degree, if it's an area that often requires that. That makes sense. Ishmi, coming over to you now then, from the computer engineering side, um, do you intend to go into graduate school? Do you want to go straight into the workforce? What are your plans? And then what are some of the industries that will hire uh, computer engineers? So like as Zach mentioned, like uh, I think electrical and computer engineering, like for example, if you go to a career fair, we can almost go to any company, walk to any company and talk about our experience and they would have some or the other position related to what we want to do. So in terms of like finding jobs and finding different industry, I think we are very adaptable, like any electrical or computer engineer from Purdue or like anywhere would be very adaptable to like almost any industry from like petroleum to like healthcare, like healthcare right now, like we need so much software data and like support from that side. And like, even like making ventilators, we need so many electrical engineer, like aspect in these things. So uh, for my personally, I want to go into industry for some time and then come back to grad school because um, I think like studying for four years, I've got the experience, like basic knowledge and I want to use it before I go to grad school and choose my special specialization. And um, for me, I have had a couple of uh, internship experience. So I was a security embed embedded security software intern at a semiconductor industry. So as the name say, like I was working like in embedded system, which is more like somewhere like systems engineering, like how we talk about electrical side of things. But then I was security intern. So like security aspect of things came in and then I was working with software too. So like um, that experience in itself shows that it is very diverse, like our degrees. And um, um, so how I would define like bachelor's degrees, you just like get the introduction of everything. You can't specialize in anything, but you can take few more classes to like have a focus. And then I would say master's is more like you choose a specific topic and learn deeply about it. And PhD is something like you built, like why does this thing happen? So if a person is trying to decide where to go and what is it exactly like. That's how I would say. And as he mentioned at Purdue, we have so big variety of like undergraduate research opportunities, especially in ECE. We have like very like a VIP called like vertically integrated projects. So you can take it as a class. So you'd work directly under a professor in the research project. So I think that is a very unique experience you can get. Like you can really focus on what you want to do as an undergrad. Awesome. Uh, Zach, you mentioned you had some internship experiences as an undergrad. What all did you do? Did you also get involved in research while you were still an undergrad student? Yeah. So I, I did mention that I had the opportunity to do research. I did it in a couple of ways. Uh, I did start my research experience in the class that Ishmi just mentioned, Vertically Integrated Projects. I was paired with a professor who was actually in the aeronautical engineering department, but he collaborated quite a bit with the electrical engineering department on um, a sensing project that was looking at uh, doing some agricultural data gathering using signals from a satellite. So that was, it piqued my interest, but it wasn't maybe a field that I was as interested in overall. And so then I approached a professor who uh, had expressed his uh, willingness to work with undergraduate students, and many of the professors in our department are. And uh, so he gave me a project to start working on to sort of 
test whether or not I was interested and whether or not I had something I could contribute. And then uh, as I started to progress and succeed with that, he integrated me more fully into his bigger research group. And uh, he's actually the professor who is currently my thesis advisor now in grad school as well. To answer the internship experience side of that, I've been lucky to have several internships when I was an undergraduate. I got an internship. Uh, I kind of divide my internships up by the kind of company that I worked for because that's the information that I personally have most valued from these experiences. I worked in a, a national lab at Sandia National Labs, and uh, that was an experience. Uh, national Laboratory is another federal, federally funded research and development facilities like those uh, have a bit of a different company atmosphere, I feel, than other companies. I've also had the opportunity to work in like a much larger company environment. I've worked for uh, as a steel mill, as I mentioned, and that was a large inter international company. And I also worked uh, for Raytheon Missile Systems, which is a defense contracting company. And they're another very large business that had almost 10,000 employees at the site that I was working at. And so I think that I valued the ability to kind of compare the different advantages or drawbacks of the different uh, work environments between those and see what I thought might be the best fit for me in the future, because I do plan once I finish my PhD to work in industry. Awesome. Those are some really cool experiences you've had. Um, so question for both of you. Um, the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering is actually the largest school uh, in the College of Engineering for undergraduate enrollment. I think they have just under 1,400 students between those two majors. So what are the class sizes like? Ishmi, we can start with you. Uh, what, what have your class sizes been like? Have you been able to have the support you've needed and get to know your classmates? What's been your experience with that over the last few years? So when we start as freshmen, especially like first and second year, the class sizes are usually bigger. We have bigger lecture rooms, like it can be anywhere from 100 to 200, but that's a lecture. So like we have it like twice or thrice a week. So that will be a, like a professor speaking and teaching you, like giving presentation. But to support that, we have office hours for like specialized office hours. You can go and walk in to clear your doubts. There are office hours of teaching assistant from undergraduate teaching assistant and graduate teaching assistant. and even even professors and apart from that few like freshman and sophomore year classes have recitation so recitation is basically like a support class for every like classes like physics or chemistry to like um, have like prepared like 20 to 30 students at one time by a graduate teaching assistant usually and they like clear all the doubts or explain the major concept which professor like explain in the class during that week and then we usually it's like uh, we have a quiz or some doubt session. So I think uh, even if we have a bigger lecture size, we don't we can't just say like we are not getting enough attention because there are other resources to support it. But once we are in junior and senior year, the class size usually goes down. Even the main lecture size is like 30 to 40 or like 50 students. And it depends which class. Like currently I'm in a graduate level class which have 200 students. It is like a new course. So again, it depends, but like we have enough resources to support that. Like we have enough office hours, we have enough office hours for professors. So yeah. It really depends and like Purdue offers so many resources to support. We have like in ECE itself, we have like um, so many office hours for lab sections. Like we have mostly lab classes. So every like usually every day in the evening, two or three hours of lab office hours are there to support the labs apart from the lab hours. So if you find resource at Purdue, you will definitely get it. Like professors won't say no to answer the question. They're always open. Usually the office hours, I don't even have to wait that much because they offer so many. Awesome. Um, Zach, I know it's been a few years for you, but what was your experience in undergrad as far as the class sizes um, from the electrical engineering standpoint? Were you able to, to also engage with your professors and, and find the resources you needed? I think that um, uh, at least when I was an undergraduate student, uh, a lot of what Ishmeet said rings true. Uh, the large classes that are often shared even beyond our major uh, can be extremely large. There are lecture sections that are, you know, over 300 students, but those really taper off aggressively once you get into your major specific classes. Um, I don't think that I've been in a major specific class that wasn't just a general seminar that 
had more than a couple hundred students in it. And I'd say that once you reach the junior level classes, they really are much more commonly uh, 30 to 80 students, even in the lecture classes, and much smaller in the labs. Uh, that's not to say that our department hasn't had to make heroic efforts to accommodate this class size. As you mentioned, it is the largest department, and it continues to grow. So for example, uh, one of the introductory undergraduate labs, when I was taking it as an undergrad, was taught over the course of three hours. And in order to accommodate this growth, it's been shortened to be taught over the course of two hours. And so so they've taken steps to try to uh, provide as many resources as possible so that uh, that change in in-lab time doesn't affect the students' learning outcomes by moving some of it into a digital format as well as providing uh, more office hours, as Ishmeet had mentioned. What kind of classes do you actually take then once you're in electrical or computer engineering? Ishmeet, we can start with you. What are some of the classes that you've been taking that are you know, computer engineering specific? Uh, maybe you've enjoyed a little bit more than some of the others. So there are a few classes which like kind of decided like when I when I was in junior year, I took like ECE 362, which is embedded systems. So I really gained the interest in that. Like I like my internship was directly related to it. So that was first class, which was like, yeah, I think I'm meant for computer engineering kind of because before that I was still very ex like in an exploring mode, like what are like different things I can do in computer engineering. Then the say, other class which I took was ASIC design, which is like computer architecture class. And it's it's very known, like th that class is known at Purdue. Like it's people, like recognize you when you like go for interviews or anything if they know Purdue they will know that class kind of so that was the other class which was like really like I can see how a computer is kind of built like chips are built and currently like my focus is AI and security like machine learning and security so I've taken two classes about intro to machine learning and uh, in terms of security, I'm currently taking computer security class. So there are a few classes. Once you are in junior and senior year, you will really understand your interest because even my friends, like they have chosen, like they, they know what they're interested in by taking those intro to like classes. Like someone is interested in networks because they took with me the networks class. So, and once you understand that, you can reach out to professor and like talk to them. Do you have any research opportunity I can get started with? And then you can really build on that interest. So like if you start um, like your focus in junior year, you can reach out to the professor of that class and just say like, can I like, join your research to like understand more and you can continue until you graduate. So I think it's a good way to like understand what you're interested in and just talk to professor and get into research. Great. Zach, how about you? What are some of the, the you know, defining electrical engineering courses that you took in your undergrad experience um, and maybe some of the ones that you enjoyed? The theme of the classes in um, electrical engineering is that you'll have a math or a physics topic that you're looking in the class and you're applying it and solving electrical engineering problems using it. Um, I think the undergraduate class that I thought was the most interesting was, uh, I guess that kind of developed the way that I'm going in my graduate career, was just a basic electromagnetic physics class that's offered in our department. And uh, it, it takes what you learn in the physics department electromagnetic physics class and it builds on it and then it starts to apply those to actual electrical engineering problems that uh, require that knowledge. One thing that I thought was really interesting was a special topics class that was offered that I had the opportunity to take where we looked at um, sound system design both from an electronics point of view as well as like an even more broad sort of in choosing actual real speaker components to fit them into a real auditorium space. So it looked almost from like an acoustics and mechanical engineering perspective as well. And uh, I thought that was really fascinating and it definitely matched very directly an interest that I had in electrical engineering. So that was one of my favorite classes I've had to take. Awesome. Ishmeet, how about you? So like I mentioned, uh, ECE 362 embedded systems class. Uh, so in that class, how it's structured is we basically learn different parts of embedded system like each week we do a lab related to it and in the end like in like last month we have a team and we have to build something out of it so like it's a mini project basically people have even built like ro mini robots and whatnot in that class so we built like i my team built like a polyphony piano so like uh it was pretty interesting like that class really like makes you like feel you have done something because at the end you have learned in the lab and actually made with a team some working design and as an engineer we have to design it we have to make it work we have to present it so i think that 
class gives all perspective of what engineering is and apart from that like currently i'm taking computer security and like i love that class because we like our assignments are like we need to hack this we need to do this so, like we are like making a spam filter or a firewall so i think it's pretty interesting to like actually see some result happening after you do an assignment and just in general like uh, my good moments of ece at purdue like i think all the lab classes really is fun because you struggle together with your peers and make it working so once your project is working that moment of achievement is really nice and like i think the hands on part of ece is amazing like all the labs and like uh, almost every class i took was supported with a lab so that part was pretty like nice about ece awesome well, Ishmi, Zach, thank you very much for joining me for this and answering these questions. We really appreciate your time and, and hope that uh, everything goes well with the rest of your careers, both PhD level and at the undergraduate level uh, for you all. So thanks again for, for joining us. Thanks you for all for watching. This has been our engineering Q&A with the School of Electrical and Computer Engineering. We'll see you guys later.